Okay, in this video we're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring and we'll do um, these examples by, well first we'll factor using the short method on these examples then we'll have to factor by pulling out the greatest common factor on these examples then we'll have to factor using the long method with these two examples, okay? So, example one um, we have x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now the first step in any of these uh, problems is to factor the left hand side. Now if I have x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 and I want to try and solve that, just look what happens when we try to you know solve for x in a, as if it was a linear equation. I mean if we were to say add 6 to both sides, okay, we would then have x squared minus x is equal to 6. Now what can we do? How can we get x by itself? Any ideas? You might want to say add x to both sides, you might think of doing that, and then you'd have say, you know, x squared is equal to 6 plus x. These are not like terms, so we can't put them together, right? What can I do now? I mean, I, I, I'm having a hard time trying to get x by itself on one side. I mean, I could take the square root of both sides for fun, and put in plus or minus, and now I have x equals plus or minus the square root of x plus, or sorry, 6 plus x. But the problem is, I have an x over here, and an x over here. How do I solve this equation to the point where I just end up with something like x is equal to 5 or you know x is equal to negative 20 like some number. How do I get x by itself is what I'm asking. Because when we had linear equations like 3x minus 4 equals 10 we would just add 4 to both sides we would get 3x is equal to 14 we would then divide by 3 and x would be 14 over 3 and you're done. You have the answer. But we can't solve this equation with linear methods, can we? We can't just solve this by adding and subtracting things to, to either side. Right? And dividing. I mean, how do we get x on its own? At this, you know, so the only way to, well, one, one way to solve this quadratic equation, this equation that has an x squared term as the highest power of x, is to factor the left hand side. We need to make sure the, the, we have zero on the right hand side. In this video we always will have zero on the right because I've made it that way to begin with. So what we need to do is factor the left hand side. Now when I see that I have an x squared term, an x term and a number, I should remember that that means I need to apply the short method okay, that we learned previously. And my answer is going to look like this. Okay. After I factor this, I'll have this, x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something. So I take my negative 6 and I list the pairs of factors of, of 6. 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Remember that? Now I say what two numbers will multiply to negative 6 and add to give negative what? What's the coefficient of x here, by the way? We have a negative x. What's the coefficient on x? Can I put a number in front of that x? There's only one x there, so I can say that's subtracting x is like subtract 1x, right? So I'm asking what two numbers will add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 6. But just, you know, what, what, how can I put a plus or a minus on, on one of these pairs to make that numbers add to negative 1? Would you use 2 and 3 somehow? positive 2 and a negative 3. How about, how about that? Because the, these two numbers will add to give us negative 1. So this factor is to be x plus 2 times x minus 3, doesn't it? And um, Or, you know, it could also, anyway, it could also be, of course, um, x minus 3 times x plus 2 wouldn't matter. But in any case, we have this, and now we remember our rule that if this factor times this factor is equal to 0, just like if a times b is equal to 0, then either this thing is 0, the a is 0, or this thing is 0, the b is 0. So we simply write down either x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0, and we solve each equation. So solve this one, 
and I have my answer that x is equal to negative 2. Solving this one, add 3 to both sides, and my answer says x equals positive 3. So I have two solutions here. x is negative 2, or x is positive 3. We have two solutions. Okay, so this is my answer. So two solutions, and the equation was an x squared you know, equation, a quadratic equation. So can you press pause in the video and solve this one with the same method? Okay, I'll do it now. So once again, we have an x squared term, an x term, and a number. So we need to factorize this trinomial with the short method. Okay, so we say, okay, x goes in the corner. We're going to have two binomials multiplied by each other. And because this is just an x squared, not a, you know, it's not a 2x squared or a 3x squared or something. If we had these guys, we would need the long method. But because we just have x squared, we just need the short method. Okay. So we can simply list the pairs of factors of 24. 1 times 24. 2 times 12. 3 times what? 4 times what? And so on. Three times eight, isn't it? Four times six. And find two numbers that multiply to give negative 24 and add to give positive two. So put a plus or a minus sign on, on these numbers and, and try and try and figure it out in your head. Basically you think, how can I add some of these pairs add or subtract these pairs to, to make plus 2. So can I use 1 and 24 to make plus 2? No. Can I use 2 and 12 to make plus 2 somehow? No. Right? I mean, can I use 3 and 8 to make 2, to add together to get 2? But how about 4 and 6? Because, look, if I had a negative 4 and a positive 6, see, they would add to give 2. Right? And then they would also multiply. If you multiply them, you get negative 24, right? So if we had x minus 4 times x plus 6, this would factorize to this, okay? Because these numbers add to 2 and they multiply to negative 24. So, so once again, this times this equals 0. So that means that either this factor is 0 or this factor is is zero and we just solve one of these each of these equations in turn so here we've got to add four to both sides and we have x is four here we simply subtract six from both sides and we have x is negative six so the answer is x is four or negative six okay now i want to show you a common error a common error is people get lazy they get lazy and they get to this point and they go oh okay x is negative 4 or x is positive 6. Is that true or false? That's false, isn't it? Because look, the answer is x is positive 4 or negative 6. They, they get too lazy to make the next step and they just write down this as their answer. And this is obviously totally wrong, isn't it? This is incorrect. Okay. And uh, just to show that's incorrect and also to check our answer, I'm going to check the answers for this. So for example, I'll check these guys. Right? So if I wanted to check x equals 4 into the original equation, it should be, you know, x squared plus 2x minus 24, and that should equal 0. So if I plug 4 in here, 4 in here and here, that should give me 0. And also, it should also work for negative 6. So x squared plus 2 times x minus 24 should equal 0 when x is also negative 6. So I'm going to plug both numbers in here now. So 4 squared is 16, 2 times 4 is 8, 16 and 8 makes 24, and 24 minus 24 is 0, so this works, doesn't it? x equals 4 is correct. Now try x is negative 6. Negative 6 all squared is negative 6 times negative 6, which is positive 36. 2 times negative 6 is minus 12, and then minus 24. So 
36 minus 12 is 24, and 24 minus 24, of course, is 0. And so this is also true. x is also equal to negative 6. So we've shown, once again, that there are two numbers that will work for this equation. Okay, Positive 4 works, and negative 6 works. And they're the only two, nothing else. So, you know, obviously our negative 4 and positive 6 obviously don't work, right? So I want you to try example 3 by yourself, so pre please press pause on the video and do it yourself. So once again, we need to apply the short method because you have an x squared term and x term and a number. We need to put the coefficient in here, that's plus 1x. Two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to 1 would be uh, plus 6 and minus 5. If you add them, they give positive 1. If you multiply them, they give negative 30. So we say x plus 6 is 0, or or x um, minus, sorry, 5. Oops. Equals 0. And if I subtract 6 from both sides, I have x is negative 6, or add 5 to both sides here x is positive 5. So negative 6 or positive 5 are the two solutions for this equation. Okay. Now these examples we're going to factor by pulling out the greatest common factor. How do I know that I need to do that? Well because the equations look like this. I have an x squared term and an x, and an x term and that's all. I just have an x squared term and an x term. So I can pull out the greatest common factor. Here, once again, an x squared term and an x term, I can pull out a greatest common factor. Okay, So what is the greatest common factor? What, what can I pull out of each term here? Can I just pull an, pull an x out? Right? And x times what gives x squared? x times x gives x squared, isn't it? And x times what gives 8x? Isn't it plus 8, right? So, you know, you can do that and then check it. Look, I fact that correctly because x times x is x squared. x times 8, 8x, right? So I have this is equal to 0, right? Now what do I do? I factorize the left-hand side. That's the first step. Okay, and so for solving quadratic equations, I did the first step. I factored the left-hand side. Now, if a times b is 0, then a is 0 or b is 0. But where's my a and b factors in this case? Well, how about this? How about put a parenthesis around this guy here? Put a parenthesis around this x. Now you have this factor of just x on its own times this factor is equal to 0. So that's just like a times b, see that, is equal to 0, right? And now we can say that if this times this is 0, then either this is 0, a is 0, or b is 0, right? So our a in this case was x, just x is 0, or x plus 8 equals 0. And we can solve each one now, right? So, if I solve this equation, sure, I just have x equals 0. That's it, right? If I solve this one, I can subtract 8 from both sides, and x is equal to negative 8. So, x is 0 or negative 8. Okay, and I can check that. The original equation was x squared plus 8x. Something squared plus 8 times something. I found that x is 0 or negative 8, so I'm going to plug 0 in there and see if that works. See if that equals 0. And then I'm going to plug negative 8 into each, um, into each place for x and see if that is 0. So 0 squared gives 0, 8 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, so this works. So x is equal to 0, that's definitely one solution. And now try x is negative 8. Um, negative 8 squared is negative 8 times negative 8, which is positive 64. Whoops. Plus 8 times negative 8 is negative 64. 
64 negative 64 definitely makes 0 so x equals negative 8 is also a solution right now example 5 we have 3x squared minus 6x is equal to 0 um, once again we need to factorize if we have an equation with an x squared term in it we need to have 0 on the right hand side and factorize the left hand side so the first step is you know factor the left hand side so um, I've got to factorize this guy now once again like I can't just solve this by linear means I can't just add 6x to both sides and uh, sides and end up with 3x squared equals 6x and so on because I mean how do I get x by itself you might think oh divide by 6 and now you have um, you know 1 times x squared over 2 is equal to x or whatever because these cross cancel right but I mean so you have x on its own here but you have x squared here I mean you don't have x is equal to the number 10 you don't have an answer you, you haven't solved this you have x on both sides still so the only way to split them up as we've seen is to factor them and now you end up with two equations this one has, just has x in it this equation just has x in it and then we can get two solutions so we factor it up and then we create magic with our a times b equals zero rule our zero product rule okay so we have um, 3x squared minus 6x equals zero find the greatest common factor for these two terms well 3 goes into both terms doesn't it does x also go into both terms right so 3x and 3x times what gives 3x squared 3x times x isn't it and 3x times what gives a negative 6x minus 2 isn't it so I have 3x times x minus 2 is equal to 0 and now I factor left hand side and I can use my zero product rule if a times b is 0 and so on so what are my two factors what are my two products in this case are two I mean my two factors well this whole thing 3x has been multiplied by this whole thing x minus 2 so we can imagine this is your a times this one is your b a times b is 0 so we can say either if this is the case then a is 0 or b is 0 so either our 3x equals 0 or our x minus 2 is equal to 0 and then solve each equation and we have our two answers so how would we solve this one let me just divide by 3 on both sides and get x is equal to 0 over 3 which is 0 and how about this one just add 2 to both sides and get x is equal to 2 so this answer is simply x is 0 or x is 2 and you can plug these numbers you know plug 0 in, in for x and check it then plug 2 in for x and check it and it should work out well let's see 2 squared is 4 3 times 4 is 12 6 times 2 is 12, so we have 12 minus 12, not 0. And obviously, if I put 0 here, 3 times 0 is 0, and six and 0 here is 6 times 0 is 0, so they both work. So, in any case. Now, we also need to factor using the long method. Okay? So, we've got to, um, once again, review the long method. The long method is if I have an x squared term, an x term, and a number equal to 0, and it's not just x squared, it's 2x squared or 3x squared, etc. Right? So in this case, I've got to do the long method. So multiply 2 times 12. In fact, you know what we'll do? I'm just going to write out, um, just going to write 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 over here. And I'm going to factorize it over here just to make it neater. So 2 times 12 is 24. Now find two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11. Okay, so we've got to look at 24 and 11 now. So if we list the pairs of factors of 24, 1 times 24, 2 times what, 3 times what, 4 times what, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, right? So find two numbers that add to 11 basically 
from here. So press pause and, and try it. If, see if you can get I'm going to do it now. So press pause if you need to. If you haven't got it yet, well, how about 3 and 8? They add to 11, don't they? So if I had a positive 3 and a positive 8, these guys would multiply to give positive 24. And these guys would add together to give positive 11. Okay. So at this point, I actually take my 11x and I split it up to be 3x plus 8x. And just to remind you, if you had a put, if you put this as 8x plus 3x, this is fine, and you will find you have the the same answer in the end anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to do that, and then I'll write down okay, 2x squared plus this, and then plus 12. And now I'm going to factor with the long method. The long method says at this point we need to just look at these two, factor these two terms, and then factor these two terms. Okay. So if I factor these two terms. 2x squared plus 3x. I've got an x squared term and an x term. I just factored them by pulling out a, a greatest common factor. This is the only way to factor these two terms is to pull out a greatest common factor. So if I have 2x squared plus 3x, I can just factor these two terms by pulling an x out. Because that's the greatest common factor of these two terms. And x times what gives 2x squared? x times 2x, isn't it? And then x times what gives 3x? x times 3, right? So x times 2x, 2x squared, x times 3 is 3x. Now, um, factor these two terms, 8x plus 12. How do you factor these two terms? What goes into 8 and 12? We can just pull out a greatest common factor again, right? So I can pull out a 4, okay, and always remember to put this plus sign doesn't go away. That comes down here, see that? So you pull out a 4, and 4 times 2x gives 8x, and 4 times 3 gives 12, okay? So I should have this situation where, you know, this is 2x plus 3 here, and we have 2x plus 3 here. These two factors should be the same. And basically I have... Um, this whole term, sep and then plus this whole term. And I can factor this whole thing by pulling out a greatest common factor, or, you know, a common factor, which is, of course, the 2x plus 3. So this gets pulled out of here and here, and it's that times, you know, this x plus this 4, and now I have factorized this whole thing. And, you know, don't be afraid to check it. I mean... 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 4 is 12. And these things add to give the top. Okay? So we can see that, right? So in any case, this thing factorizes to be 2x plus 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 0. So I have this factor times this factor equals 0, so that means either my 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, or my x plus 4 is equal to 0, and I simply solve both of these equations to get the two solutions. So I can subtract 3 from both sides, and get 2x equals negative 3. Now divide by 2 on both sides, and get x equals negative 3 over 2, and as a decimal that would be negative um, 1.5, right? So please give your answers in fraction form and in decimal form. Okay, on this one, we'll subtract 4 from both sides, and we end up with x equals negative 4. So we have x equals, you know, negative 1.5 or negative 4, two solutions, right? Two solutions. So example 7, press pause and try it yourself. Okay, now I'm going to do it in a minute, so here I go. I'm going to first of all write my trinomial on the left-hand side of the page, or, or right side of the page, to make it neater. Now, I need to use the, the long method because I have a 3 in front of the x squared. I don't just have x squared by itself. Now, the trick with this one is to go 3 times negative 5 
is negative 15. Okay, a lot of people put down positive 15. That's wrong. It has to be negative 15. Now you look at this number and this number, 14 and negative 15. You've got to find two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to positive 14. So list the pairs of factors of 15. 1 times 15, 3 times 5, right? What two numbers add to positive 15 but multiply to give negative 15? And you can put a positive or a negative on any of these pairs. So press pause and find these two magic numbers. So once again, how about, let's see, if I have a, look, 15 minus 1 gives 14, doesn't it? So how about a negative 1 and a positive 15? These guys would add to give positive 14. And if I multiply them, multiply these numbers in your head and you get negative 15, right? So once again, I'm going to split the 14x up to be, you know, the two magic numbers. You can either write it as negative 1x plus 15x, or I'm going to do it this way, 15x minus 1x. I'm just I'm going to do it this way just because it, it'll bring up a, a, an, an issue that might arise when you're factoring. So, so I'm going to write 3x squared plus 15x minus 1x minus 5. So this whole thing has been rewritten like this. Now we simply factor these two terms and then factor these two terms. So if I factor these guys, what do I get? Pull out a 3x, and it's 3x times x plus 5, isn't it? Now look at this one. Negative 1x minus 5. How can I pull out a common factor from him? It looks like there isn't any common factor apart from, you know, 1. Like I could pull a 1 out and be 1 times negative 1x minus 5. That's kind of dumb. I could also pull out a negative 1. See that? If I pull out negative 1, negative 1 times what gives negative 1x? Negative 1 times x gives negative 1x. Negative 1 times what gives negative 5? Positive 5, right? And now look, we have the same factor here and here, x plus 5, and we need this. These two things have to be the same for this method to work. So now I have this whole term separated by a subtraction sign and then this whole term here and they both have a common factor of x plus 5 so I can pull out x plus 5 and now say okay x plus 5 times this thing 3x then minus 1 is the answer right and check it x times 3x 3x squared x times negative 1 negative 1x 5 times 3x, 15x, 5 times negative 1, negative 5, and then these things add to here, right? So factorizing this guy, I get x plus 5 times 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. And now my two factors are this and this. So this is my a, that's my b, so I go, okay, either this thing is 0 or the 3x minus 1 is 0. So if I solve this guy, just subtract 5 from both sides, and I have x is equal to negative 5. Solving this guy, just add 1 to both sides, and I have 3x equals 1. Now divide by 3, and I have x is equal to 1 third. So the answer is x is negative 5, or x is 1 third, okay? Now, if you had to get this as a decimal, that would just be, you know, 1 divided by 3 in the calculator gives us 0 0.3333, etc. And if you were given that to three decimal points, you would just go, three decimal places, you go 0 0.333, right?